Hello, I'm Paddy from creativemedia.org.uk and I'm staying in a place which happens to have a Casio CPS-80S, which I think is a 1990s digital piano in the music room. I'm in a music room with two grand pianos. It's an amazing place and I'm very grateful for people who let me stay here. Um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to do a review of this keyboard and see how it stands up against modern stuff. Because I think this is, yeah, like, did I say late 90s early 90s keyboard I can't find out the dates on it but have a listen see what you think let's turn the view round to the beast itself and it is quite a beast this keyboard weighs 18 nearly 18 kilograms and it says it's got weighted keys but I don't know if they are weights is to turn the volume down they didn't really feel like weighted keys they, they got kind of I don't know if you can see that they got fronts to them but um, I was a bit fooled that way when I bought my Roland piano, my Roland EP7. It kind of looked like it was weighted keys, but they aren't really. And this one's the same. They're, they're certainly not hammer action. They've got a bit of weight to them. Not really much weight. And I should say about my recording setup as well. Um, I am recording the piano straight into, into a, a recording device. So what you're hearing is straight out of the headphone socket. So, let's hear something. Turn it down a little bit. Yeah, so here is the piano, the, the standard piano that comes up when it turns on, Piano 1. I think that's got a really house sort of sound to it. Uh, that's not a 90s track, that's a 2023 track, uh, Kylie Minogue, Tension. But that one's very kind of retro in the sense of the piano it uses. Hmm. <laughs> I can't play that. The um, bit of black box. Got a very housey feel and I quite like that. I think the big problem with this, apart from the weight, 18, I said that, 18 kilograms nearly, without stand, um, it's only got 16 note poly polyphony, so I don't, as a kind of piano you can do a lot better than that if you want a piano you can carry around, you can get ones lighter, more polyphony, maybe probably better sounds and USB connections. This one has MIDI in and out, the old school 5 pin DIN kind of MIDI. No USB at all. This is before USB was invented, I think. So let's go through some sounds. And that'll go through the features. So you've got volume control. No crackles on that, which is nice for a keyboard so old. We've got a transpose here, which you can slide all the way up to F. And all the way down to F sharp, downwards. Which, in a way, seems like a good idea. You can, you can see where you transpose straight away. But finding your way back to C, if you want to kind of pop up to E flat, and then back to C, you've got to actually have a bit of a look at that and make sure you're in the right position. But you can get great. No, you can't. You can't get glissando effects. I thought you could go. But so not a brilliant thing. You've got a touch cancel, which which cancels out the velocity sensitivity. Of course, this keyboard does have velocity sensitivity. So that's good. I'm, I'm guessing it's got the full 128 um, levels of velocity. Uh, there's two rows of sounds. So you get a select between the top row and the bottom row. So I'm going to go down to piano two. the bass on it. <laughs> Bit of level 42 there. Uh, yeah, piano one. Piano two. Nice, nice sounds. You're just limited by that 16 notes of polyphony. 
And I'm, I'm going to hold on a note because sometimes on the keyboard, the, as the note fades out, it just sounds a bit nasty. So I'm going to try that. To my ear, nothing nasty there. My Roland piano has a slight kind of sound at the end of the fade out. This one doesn't have any of that, so that's quite a good thing. So, on the electric piano. I don't have a sustain pedal with me, so I'm a bit limited. I love an electric piano. It's got a bit of a hammer, that one. Which down here is lovely. Something you might, you'll notice is there's no reverb on this at all. No chorus. Most digital pianos, I think nowadays, have a reverb and a chorus. Even just a simple on-off one. So this has none of that. Here's the classic of pianos of this era. The um, bass and piano combo. Is that the same piano as one of these? Let's see. No, it's different. So I think, yeah, you've got piano two. Have you? Piano one? Yeah, so you've got piano one, same sound on this end. And you've got a bass. <laughs> That's the wrong sound, <laughs> wrong song. <laughs> Yeah, um, harpsichord. Now this one's a bit interesting. It's got, it's got the nice sort of. Well, it hasn't really. It's, it sounds like it's got a reverb on. I don't know why they've put a kind of faux reverb on that, and not on the other instruments. Because a harpsichord really does cut off instantly and doesn't give you a reverb. So that's odd. Now, the strings and piano, this can sometimes make or break a keyboard. Let's see how this one is. I'm not hearing the strings. Where are the strings? Is it. I can't hear any strings. Ah! It's probably stereo. I've bought a, um, uh, an adapter which only works on one side, so I can't hear one side of this. So you're probably hearing the strings, and I'm not. I'm going to just quickly unplug this and see if I... Yeah, the strings are coming out one side. Okay, so that's useful to know, but a bit limited when you've got the strings coming out one side and the piano the other. Okay, the vibraphone, the ubiquitous vibraphone. Hmm. Strings. Sometimes I hate the strings on these things. That's got a bit of a tail off on it, like a reverb almost. Sounds like a string sample. Uh, lastly, it's the pipe organ. Now here, where I might use the touch ca cancel. I 
And lastly, the jazz organ. That's quite nice. Got a nice chunky bass. I do like the bass end of this keyboard. Not so good at the top. So that it is pretty much all you've got. There's some song playbacks. I think there are 26 demo songs stored in the memory. It could have maybe used that for something else, maybe <laughs> reverb instead. And you can record two parts. And it's actually possible to record two separate parts and play them back together. So you could play like part one of us, like the left hand of a song of a track and practice the right hand over it or the right hand of it and practice the left hand over it. And you can also play those back together and you can play back song A whilst you're recording song B. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I can't be bothered to learn it. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Why would you really want this? You could use it as a MIDI controller keyboard, I suppose, as long as you didn't need a USB MIDI output. Um, the sounds are quite nice, and of course, I think if you use it as a MIDI controller keyboard, you wouldn't be you wouldn't have that sixteen note polyphony limit. I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, you might want to check that. I think it's just the the audio generation stuff that's limited to sixteen notes, but don't know for sure. But the sound's not awful. The keyboard's not brilliant, but it's all right. It's not a wonderful stage piano. There's lighter ones around with a proper um, hammer action, I think, probably, or similar weight, but much better features. So it's a bit niche, this one. I wouldn't recommend it um, to somebody who wanted a digital piano, but I wouldn't also would recommend throwing it in the bin, necessarily, unless you've got three or four other ones, or even one or two other ones. Yeah, so sorry, Casio, you're a nice sounding keyboard, but quite limited by modern standards. Bit of a dinosaur, I might say. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that's helped you make your mind up about the Yamaha CP... Yeah, I keep calling it a Yamaha. Casio CPS80S. Bye.